大家一起讨论，然后就说让我们上了，就让我们来去打个最后一局，定胜负的这一局。如果我们赢了，然后票就赢了。Firstly, career potential as an esports athlete. So, all oh, there is no doubt that the potential of being an esports athlete is enormous. Becoming a professional esports athlete not only has the opportunity to compete in China, but also is more likely to represent the country. This is the supreme honor. The most important point is salary. Take League of Legends project as an example. In 2016, Faker, the top professional League of Legends player, earned an annual salary of $480,000, while Ming Kai, a famous esports player in China, ranked 11th with an annual salary of $242,000. Nowadays, with the vigorous development of esports, the increasingly mature competition operation, and hundreds of millions of audiences, the salary of esports players is naturally rising. With viewers, sponsorships, and prize pools now outpacing even some traditional sports, video games are suddenly a more viable career path than ever. At schools like Maryville University and Columbia College in Missouri, there's a hope in the back of players' minds that their talent might get them noticed. My biggest passion in life is competitive League of Legends. I never expected to be like a, a professional gamer. You never thought about that growing up? For being less than a decade old, professional League of Legends is in a pretty good place. Pros on the North American circuit can rake in a six-figure salary. The biggest annual tournaments put millions of dollars on the line. And esports as an industry now supports more careers, from coaching and broadcast to programming and graphic design. Some players even make a living streaming gameplay on platforms like Twitch. And by most counts, League of Legends is the most popular online game. Last time Riot Games talked about stats, 27 million people logged in to play every day, and 43 million people tuned in to watch streams of the 2016 World Championship. That's approaching the popularity of some World Series or NBA Finals games. So why not go? Players are already putting in the focus and the hours to make League of Legends a full-time job. Their performance shows that all the teamwork and communication they've honed works. The best college players are among the most skilled in the world, in the top tenth of one percent of everyone who plays League. As they say, academics come first. The players know if they're good enough, they might get other opportunities. I want to be a professional more than like anything ever. Well, the hope would be like to do a professional event, but the realistic goal is to get a job with like a science degree. Coaches are also aware that their best players might get offers from pro teams. When I'm thinking about professional team, having to play is kind of hard to come down. If if it does happen, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to investing in pro. It's good for them. I have no problem with them going pro if they want to. I mean, who wouldn't want to go pro if they have their expert, you know? I make sure that they read the contracts because I you never know what the contracts gonna say or say. That didn't happen during Maryville's 2017 season, and if it ever does, it's still not for everyone. The time and effort needed to go pro is even more demanding than playing for a varsity team. To go pro, you have to really be really motivated and you have to dedicate a lot of your time. And I don't feel like I'm in a place where I can commit as much time as my teammates. Andrew Smith is pursuing Maryville's Rawlings Sport Business Management degree. He expects to graduate in 2019. I don't expect to go to college for playing video games. So it's kind of weird to look back and think about it. It's not like it was something I dreamt about, it just happened. So that's the coolest part. It was always sort of like a pipe dream of mine, I guess, to eventually make it pro. If I can't make it as a pro player, I would love to work for an organization or even write games as part of their broadcasting. Since the 2017 season, Connor Doyle has moved towards University in Ohio to finish a degree in business administration and captain the school's League of Legends team. He's also interning as a coach for Wind and Rain, a league team on the European pro circuit. But he remembers where he started, and the team he helped build when he signed on at Columbia College. That process definitely taught me a lot about myself, taught me how to be a better leader. This was when I was at Colby College my sophomore year. I had to make a decision whether or not I actually wanted to try it and make it pro and follow my dream. It was, uh, it's a little crazy, looking back. Secondly, potential careers other than athletes in the field of esports. Become a staff member of an esports club, enter the coaching staff, and even the management. For example, in 2018, a China esports player named Tae became coach of Brazilian team Kabum. This is also the first China player to coach on national day. An anchor in this era of rapid development of the media, most esports athletes will choose to become an anchor after their careers. Even some professional clubs will set up a live broadcast area in the club. An esports entrepreneur. In the era of rapid development of the media, esports will be a hot stream. The development of esports industry is bound to get hotter and hotter, and it is impeccable from any angle, but esports also has high risks. Esports players have a short career, maybe only three or four years, maybe even shorter. Esports, like stock investment, has high risks and high returns, so we all need to choose the career that suits us best and do what we can. The potential of esports industry does not need to be questioned. If you want to be an esports player, go ahead.